Hello everybody. So today I'm going to do an intro to macros for Rhino. A buddy of mine over on the 3D CAD Jewelry Forum, he has, he's having to uh, render his product catalog. So he's got a thousand pieces and he needs four shots of each piece, all at the same uh, view vantage point. So he wants, you know, all the pieces to have a shot rendered like this. He wants all the pieces to have a shot rendered like that from the front. Um, <clears throat> We are going to automate this, so he just has to open up the file and click play on his macro, and it's going to render all four viewports uh, for him. So I've got two layers set up here, render material one. That has a render material set to it, so I want to move my metal to render material one because that's going to render it as metal. Gemstones, uh, all of this stuff is diamond, so his diamonds need to go on render material too, so they get the diamond material applied to them before render. That is the first little bit of setup. The other little bit of setup, we want to come in here to named views. All right, so let's just say he wants to uh, render it upside down and crazy like this. Just come over here and click save as. I want to say camera one. Okay, he would do that for his other three views. And that way we have a name we can call from the macro to get our camera to be exactly at this position and uh, render it from that vantage point. If you want to be a little bit more granular with the control of where the camera is placed, he can type camera and toggle and it looks like nothing happened. But if we go to our other viewports here, you can see that we're now seeing the camera. So you can grab the back of the camera and move it in and you're changing your the, the, the focal length of your lens. So now we went from having a you know 100 millimeter camera and now we're down to a, a 65 millimeter camera. So whatever depth he wants to get, um, he can also grab this and bring it in uh, to change the, um, the focal length as well. If you're using a renderer that um, can do depth of field, like Maxwell, you want to make sure that this focal plane is where you want the part to be focused. So you want to grab it and make sure that it is on the front edge of your piece, because if you use a large aperture, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, if you use a large aperture, if you use a 2.8, then uh, you're going to be blurry right about here. But, you know, the rest of these will be blurry. If you've got it cranked down to 32, then, uh, you know, the whole part will probably be in focus. But you want to pay attention to where that uh, focal plane is for it to be in focus. If it doesn't use any type of depth of field rendering, then you don't have to be uh, concerned with that. But let's set this back to our... Uh, let's set this back to our perspective view. And now we can get started with the, uh, the macro. So the easiest thing to do for, for starting out with macros is to type everything up here in the command line. Don't use buttons. Uh, make sure you type as much as you can. So I'm going to say, let's just start with something easy. Uh, rotate. Now it wants me to select the objects to rotate. So I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to right click. Now that pause waiting for an enter, we are going to replace in the macro with a pause. And what it will do is wait for the user to hit enter before it keeps going with the macro. So the next thing we're going to do is say center rotation is zero and uh, we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And there you go. The other thing that uh, we do is uh, we put an underscore before everything. So Rhino is available in lots of different languages. What I call rotate Somebody uh, in Russia calls something different, and God knows what people in Great Britain like Joseph are using. So we definitely need to say underscore rotate so that what I write is reusable in other languages. All Rhino commands, there's two versions of them, the native language and the underscore English name. So that's the first thing we need to do. The other thing is for a window with a pop-up box like... Uh, change layer. It's waiting for me to enter uh, to pick a selection. So I'm going to grab that and say OK. And now it gives me a pop up window. You can't 
have a macro interact with an interactive window. You can let the user do it. Uh, the user could do this and click OK, and then your macro would proceed. But I want to make this thing auto magic, so I'm going to say dash underscore change layer. Still going to want a selection, tell it OK. And now instead of a pop up interactive window, I can do everything in text, and I can say render mat one and that's going to move it to my render mat one layer so let's undo both of those things and pull this down and we're going to grab our text here starting with our uh, this rotate we're going to copy that and let's pop up notepad plus here okay so we want to strip that off here it's saying select objects to rotate, press enter when done. That needs to be replaced with a pause. Let me go ahead and put an underscore in front of rotate one there. Okay. That's going to pause, allow the user to make a selection, and when it, the uh, macro sees that user presses enter or right click or space, the macro will start running again. The next thing we want our macro to do is put a zero in, followed by a 90. And that's done. Let's skip down here to uh, change layer, which is our next command. And when uh, the macro comes across a uh, enter, it will treat it like an enter. An enter, a space, anything, it will close out that particular selection and move on to the, the next step. So just by putting these on separate lines, it makes it more readable and it um, it presses enter after some input. If there's no input, it's not going to hit enter again. You want to hit enter again, you type enter. All right, so after change layer, we need another pause here for selection. Okay, and then we need to give it the name. I always enclose my strings with quotes. Sometimes you don't have to. But it's best to do that. Come down here. And one other thing you can do is uh, let's say you had a command that had a lot of, let's say if we did this rotate, but with a copy. Okay, so I'm going to say underscore copy equals true. Now, after I do 90, that command is not going to finish. It's going to look for me to uh, give it another uh, second angle so it can make another copy. So if I say 45, it will make a 45 degree copy and then wait for me to do something else. What you need to do is have an enter end to end that command. All right, so let's give this a shot. Let's copy this and come back over here. We can make this small again. And I'm going to open up another tab here called Macro Editor. I'm going to paste that in, and I'm going to hit Play. Okay, so the first thing it's doing is doing the rotate. It's pausing, asking for input. I'm going to grab that. It did a 90 degree and a 45 degree. Oh, my copy did not work. Unknown command, copy equals true. Oh because on this one it is yes. All right, let's try that again. I hate it when that happens. All right, so there, now I've got my uh, 45 and 90 degree copy. Now uh, it's on to the next step, change layer, pause. I'm gonna grab that part right there, right click, and now that part out of the three of them is on uh, my render mat one. So let's undo that and undo that previous rotate as well so everything goes back to its normal position here. Um, and that, that issue of me thinking it was true and not yes, that's why you do everything in the command window first and then go over and uh, piece it all together. I am not going to have mistakes in this because I already worked this one out and I am just going to copy and paste this in here. So uh, let's run through this. 
first a semicolon. The semicolon means this is a comment, so you can keep this uh, kind of readable if you get something this big and complex. You might want to make this into a script, but if you don't know how to script, this is a great way to uh, automate it. So the first step is move metal objects to the right layer. It's going to be called change layer, followed by pause, and then change it to render material one. And because I have that little dash there, it's not going to be interactive. It's all going to happen up in the command line. Uh, select none. I always like to do select none between commands because uh, sometimes a command is sticky. So the part you are working with is selected after the command is finished. Select none will just clear out your selection sets and make sure that uh, when you get to the next command, you know, if I had a part selected before this ran, it's going to skip the pause and go straight to placing it on render material one. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to do a select none and then do change layer and move my gemstones to the right layer, which is render material two. Select none. And then uh, another thing Joseph has to do is import a trademark stamp and Boolean it out of the ring. Import is another one of those uh, interactive things where we pull up a browse to find the file. I've already got the file hard coded in here. So I'm just going to say enter end after it to skip over the do you want to weld the vertices and, and that kind of stuff. Select none um, because this mesh would be selected when we try to do the mesh boolean and it is the subtractor. Uh, you know, it is the second part, not the first part. So let's it'll next go ahead and do mesh boolean difference. And one of the things you can do is we'll do this real quick, is just highlight a part of your macro and hit run. Select objects for layer change, that's it. Okay, select objects for layer change, that's it. And import. Okay, I just went through to here. Now I can highlight the rest of it for when I run the second part of it. You know, this helps with debugging. You can go line by line through here and uh, figure out where you've gone wrong. So the next thing is doing a mesh Boolean difference. We put these things on another layer because that's how we get the render materials for it. But there's also group names and object names that you can set. You can say uh, move metal objects to the right group and then you can put it in a group and set group name and that way you can select by the group name layer later. Or you can do that with individual objects. So there's a lot of set object name, set group name commands in Rhino. And you can find them uh, just by hitting F1. Let me bring this down to, to size here because I'm recording at a smaller resolution. So I can say set group, set group name. Okay. And there is set group name. And there is also a select group name. Well, let's just select group. And then... Um, Select group, you can put the name in and, and pull it up. Okay. But we are using layers for that purpose here. So I can grab everything in render material one, hit enter, change the delete input to yes option because we want to get rid of this uh, trademark stamp once we're done. We don't want to render this block in there afterwards. And then select last. The last thing that was created was this uh, mesh done on the import, so I can just use select last and uh, grab it, enter in, and that will do our mesh Boolean difference. So we can run that real quick. And there you go. That part was cut out. And then last is to render the part. So we've got render the scene, render the scene, uh, call our name view, restore camera one that we created earlier. Enter end because there's some extra options there. And then I'm going to render, save the render window as uh, a JPEG file. Let me make this wider. There you go. All right, save it as a JPEG and then close the render window. Joseph's not using the Rhino render program, he's using V Ray, I believe. Uh, but because render will still launch V-Ray, I'm pretty sure these commands will work as well. If not, he'll have to click, close, save, do all that stuff by hand. But this should work for him. I'm interested to know if it does. But let's undo 
and just run the whole thing as one one finished piece. So we'll click run here. Uh, that's the first part to move. That's the second set of parts to move. It's doing the Boolean difference. Okay, it changed to our fantastic uh, angle. It's rendering the piece and it closed everything on its own. And I can come over here and open up the JPEG. There it is. Okay, there's our little cutout. There's our piece. Scooch that over. And there's our render scene. All right, and that's it. I'm going to uh, post this macro up in uh, Joseph's question about how to do this on the form. If you have any other questions, feel free to sign up for 3dcadjewelry.com, and uh, somebody's always there to help you out. All right, see you.